Hey everyone, in this video, we'll add the ability to save messages to the database. This way we can leave the chat room and come back and our messages will still be there. This isn't too hard to do, but require using a new function to use any of our regular models functions in an asynchronous environment. We will also need to update our room template to get the saved messages and display them. Let's start by adding a couple classes to our models.py file. So we'll go into our models.py. Right now, there's nothing there. And we want to add two classes here. First, we'll create one called chat. Do a class chat. And this will inherit from models.model. This will be like our all of our normal models. And we want to go ahead and have uh, four fields here. First, we'll create a content field. And this will be set equal to models.char field. And this will just hold the actual text body that we're typing in for a message. We'll set a max length of, I guess, a thousand should be enough here. Next, we'll have a timestamp. And this will equal models.datetime field. And we'll do auto now equal true. So this will fill automatically as soon as we create the field. Uh, next, we'll set a user field. And this will be a models.foreign key. And this will hold the user that's sending the chat. And we need to go ahead and import user. So up here at the top, we'll go ahead and type from django.db.models. Uh, no, django.db.contrib.auth.models. Import user. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and add it on delete. And this will equal just models.cascade. Next, we'll add a room, and this will be equal to models.foreign key. This will hold a, another model that we're going to create here in a second, and we'll call it chat room. And this will be the room that we're typing our message into. That way we can differentiate between which messages go to which room. And that way, if we go to separate rooms, they won't show all of our chats for all the rooms because that wouldn't make much sense. And then once again here, I'm going to add on delete. And this will equal models.cascade as well. Next, let's go ahead and create our chat room model. So we'll do a class of chat room. And this will inherit from models.model. And this will have just one field in it, just a name field, which we'll set equal to models.char field. And this will hold just the text field that we're typing in. Um, that's the name of the actual chat room that we're in. And so we'll set a max length of 255 here. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead and save that file, and let's go ahead and migrate our changes to our database. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal, stop the server, run a Python 3 manage.py uh, make migrations, and then we'll do a Python 3 manage.py migrate, like that, and we'll go ahead and rerun our server. Okay. And now with that done, let's go ahead and update our views.py. So we'll come into our views here. And the first thing we want to do is once we go into a room, so we look at here, if we were to go into a room, let's so call it lobby, we want to go ahead and check if there is a room, chat room object with that name. And if there's not, we want to go ahead and create one. That way, when we create messages, we'll have a chat room model to associate it with. And so to do this is pretty easy, and I've done this in other tutorials, so this might look familiar if you've seen those. Um, but what we're going to do here is first we're going to look for a room with, that matches the name that we just typed in. So inside of our room class here, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called room, set that equal to chat room, which we need to import here in a second, chat room dot objects dot filter, and we'll put name equaling to room underscore name. And we'll do a dot first to grab the first object out of that query set. Um, or it'll be nothing there if there's no objects at all. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a variable called chats and set this equal to empty list. And what this will hold is all of the chats for the room if we find a room. So if this room value is not empty, we'll go ahead and look for all the chats that are associated to this room and we'll store them in this variable called chats. Next, let's go ahead and look for the room. And so we can do just if room. So if this room variable found something, or I should say if this filter right here found something, um, this will return something and this won't be false. We can go ahead and look for all the chats. 
We can do that by doing chats equals chat dot objects dot filter. And we can do room equaling room. We can, now we'll do an else. If we didn't find a room, let's go ahead and create a room. So we'll do a room equals chat room. And we'll put inside of our constructor here, name equals room underscore name, which is coming from the arguments here, which is coming from whatever we typed into that field um, on our index page. And now that we create it, we need to go ahead and save it. So we can just do a room dot save to save that field. Now down here inside of our context, we want to pass in either this empty list here or all the chats we found from our room in here as well. And so we'll go ahead and pass in a value or a key called chats with a value set to our chats variable. We'll go ahead and save that. And that is it for our views. That should do everything to set up our room so we can actually associate chats when we create them uh, inside of our consumer. So let's go ahead and jump into our consumer now and update that to associate it to a room. So we'll go into our consumers.py. Or actually, before I do anything else, I forgot to go ahead and import chat room and chat as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll do from dot models import chat and chat room. Okay. Now it's going back to our consumers. And the first thing we're going to do is up here at the top, we don't need this 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 line anymore this async to sync we're going to replace that with a different function so instead of that we're going to do it from channels.db import database sync to async and this function database sync to async is what we'll need to do to call any of our database functions so any of our gets filters our saves or anything else needs to be wrapped inside of this otherwise we'll get an error since we're using asynchronous um, website and consumer You'll get some weird errors saying something like you can't use synchronous functions inside of an asynchronous environment or something like that. Um, that's because you need to wrap it inside of this. So we'll use that here in a second. But first, what we want to do is every time we send a chat to the WebSocket, we want to go ahead and create a chat object. So we want to create one of these objects here every time we create a message. So what we'll do is we'll go down into our receive function right here. And above this group send, we're going to go ahead and add a few lines here. So the first step is to find the room model object that matches the room that we're in. So find the text that matches. And we can do this with room equals await. And we need await because we're, going to, we're in an asynchronous environment. We'll do database sync to async. And inside of the function here, we're going to pass in chat room dot objects dot gets and then out here we put another parentheses and put name equals self dot room underscore name and this self dot room underscore name is coming from up here uh that she's coming from right here inside of our scope we're grabbing the room name from the keyword arguments inside of our url and so we have the room name here we can grab it with self dot room name and we pass it inside of this parentheses so this might look kind of weird when we're wrapping our synchronous function inside database sync to async and then we're calling that database async to async database sync to async function and passing in whatever we want to pass into our chat room objects that I get into those parentheses so hopefully that makes sense um, we just got to do it this way since we're in an asynchronous uh, environment here now let's make sure we go ahead and import chat room as well as chat because we'll need both of those inside of our consumers so from dot models import chat and chat room right like that and now that we have the room let's go ahead and create a new chat object so right here we'll go ahead and do create new chat object and we'll do chat equals chat inside of the constructor here we'll pass in a few things we'll pass in content which will equal our message that we have up here the user will equal self.scope and we'll pass in user and then finally we need to grab our room which is equal to room which we found right up here okay now we have our chat object created we need to go ahead and save that 
But once again, we need to put this through our database synced async function. So right below this, we'll do await and we'll do database synced async and we'll do chat.save and then put our parentheses for that outside of our database synced async. So make sure you don't put, you don't call the function inside of here. That's not going to work. You need to call it outside of the, of the database synced async function like that. And that should save the chat message. The last thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and update our room.html to find all of these messages, these chat objects we created, and show them on the template before anything else is done. So we want to go ahead and just automatically grab all those that match the room and show them um, inside of a room template before the user um, sends any messages. That way they can see their old chats when they leave and come back. So let's go ahead into our room.html and make this update. So right now we have access to chats. If you look at our views, we have access to chats here um, that we pass in from our view into the template. So we can use that to list out all of our chats. So inside of our chat log div here, we can go ahead and first make a for loop. So we'll do percent sign to uh, or two curly braces, two percent signs. And we can do for chat in chats dot all. And you gotta make sure you put a dot all uh, since we have a query set we want to loop over. Now inside this for loop, we can go ahead and do a curly brace two percent sign and if statement here and do chat dot user dot id is equal to request dot user dot id. So what we're doing here is we're checking does the user on the chat match the logged in user. If they do match that, then we want to go ahead and, and show this message with the sender class on it. So if you remember in our CSS, we made a sender class and a receiver class. One makes it one makes the uh, message show up in with a blue background on the right or left, and the other one makes it show up with a green on the other side. So we want to go ahead and do the same thing here. Uh, check if those IDs match. If so, we'll create a div a class equaling to message and a class equal to sender. Inside of this div here, we're going to go ahead and put in our mess, our, our chat.content, which is just the message body. We're going to close off this div. And then we'll go ahead, actually, first, let's go ahead and just tab this in. Um, and then if they don't match, we'll put an else. And if they don't match, then we know this user is receiving this message. So we'll create another div with a class equaling to message and receiver. And then inside this div, once again, we'll put the message body, which is found inside of chat.content. We're going to close off that div. And finally, we can close off this if statement right here. And if, and then we can go ahead and close off this for loop as well. And for. And I think that should be it. So in case this doesn't make much sense, all we're doing here is we are kind of doing the exact same thing we did inside of our room.js file. So what we did here is we we found if the user ID matches the logged in user, which is the same thing as request.user.id. If they do match, we add the message in the sender class. If they don't match, we add the message in receiver class. So all we're doing is just duplicating that over here so the messages look the same as they would if a user just typed them in uh, without doing anything. With that done, let's go and test this out and see how this works. So we'll come back here, come back here, reload this page, uh, reload this page, and actually we'll go back and we're going to re-enter the room so we create the room. And if we send a chat here, and we'll send one here as well, let's go and come back and come back into lobby. Uh, looks like there might be an issue here. See here, did we do something wrong somewhere? Let's go and add uh, both the chat and chat room classes to our admin so we can go and check that out. From dot models, import chat and chat room. We'll do admin dot site dot register chat, uh, chat room, and we'll go and just copy this. And we'll just change this to chat. Um, go ahead and create a super user with Python 
three uh, manage.py create super user create admin user okay let's go ahead now and run the server again let's go and double check in our admin see what it looks like okay so our chat room object created successfully so that's good and let's go back and look at our chats and our chats did not create successfully so let's go ahead and double check what might be going wrong there so we'll jump back into our consumers.py to double check that Okay, it looks like maybe I sent refresh the page correctly or something. Uh, it looks like it's working now. If I go back, leave the page, come back in the lobby, uh, the messages show up just like they should. We add a few more, and every time we add a message, come back here, refresh the chat, you'll see it creates a new chat object each time. So if I leave and I come back, the messages don't go away. If I refresh the page, they don't go away. So now all of our messages are showing up like they should, and they're all being saved into the database. Now there is one problem though. If we were to leave this room and go to a different room, type anything in here, you'll see that our no messages uh, empty text is now missing. And so let's double check on that and see what's going on there. Uh, if you go to our room.js, let's go ahead and just console log uh, the child nodes. So apparently this is saying it has a child node and this is not running. So we'll do a console.log chat log dot child nodes will give us a list of all the child nodes for that element. Let's come back here. Let's go ahead and reload the page here. Let's open up the console here. And it looks like it has some random text element here that we don't want. Uh, I could look through and try to figure out why that is, but just to make this video quick and not take forever doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick fix for that, which would be going to our room.js here. We'll delete this line. We don't need it anymore. And now instead of checking if it has child nodes, let's just check if it's greater than or equal to one. If it's less, or I should say less than or equal to one. And so what we'll do here now, instead of if not chat log has child nodes, let's delete that. And also let's get rid of this not. And we'll do if chat log dot child nodes. So if that child nodes list that we just printed out on this in the console, and the length of that is less than or equal to one, then we know all we have there is that random text element we don't really care about. And if that's the case, let's go ahead and show our empty text. I'll come back here, reload this page, and there it comes back. We'll get rid of that, we don't need that anymore. And now if we go ahead and add a message, so let's go ahead and add a message here. Um, the empty text goes away and it fills in um, that. If we were to come out here and go to that same room, which I called ABC, you'll see that message show up here. So now everything's working great. We have our messages saving and loading correctly uh, in the chat rooms based off of what chat room we're in. And that is where we'll stop for today on this video. All the code for this will be in the description below. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.